live in a diverse world, filled with over 7 billion people of different genders, colors, religion, sexuality, disabilities, and probably a million other things I can't think of right now, each with their own stories to tell for everyone to relate to. But that's not always true. In 2013, there was a study that showed that out of 3,200 children's books published, only 93 were about African Americans. That's 0.03%. I'm no analyst, but I think there are more than 0.03% of African Americans. And this wasn't just a fluke year. It found that only 10% of all children's books featuring minorities were published per year for over 18 years. This got a lot of people mad. Which led to many authors, bloggers, and industry folks working together to make the We Need Diverse Books campaign, a grassroots campaign to help produce and promote children's literature for all children. Because we live in a diverse world, and it's time our works start to reflect that. To celebrate, we will be looking at books made by and focusing on diverse, aka non-white, people for the next four weeks. And to kick it off, we are looking at one of the biggest African-American authors, young adult books. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax as we dive into Fallen Angels by Walter Dean Myers. <laughs> Fallen Angels follows the life of Richard Perry joining the army and being sent out to his first real conflict. The year is 1967. Take two guesses what major U.S. conflict was going on at the- You know your history. Love that. But Perry isn't too worried. I hadn't been too worried about going to Nam. From what I had heard, the fighting was almost over anyway. <laughs> Don't. After that, you can pretty much fill in every cliche attached to stories about the horror, the horror, diddy mao, game over, man, game over! It's a Vietnam War story published in 1988. Would you expect anything less? In all honesty, most Vietnam stories for me blend together with the same message. War is hell especially when they were pointless wars that disenfranchise a country. In other words, it's every single anti-war story you know. You can pretty much call this All Quiet on the Western Front, Vietnam Edition. But this is one of my personal favorite books. For one, unlike every other story targeting adults, Fallen Angels demographic is young adult, which makes sense because most of the principal cast are teenagers, most just coming out of high school. Which leads to one of the best parts of the book, the characters' interactions. Hey Perry? It was Pee Wee. What? What did you do back in the world? Just got out of school, I said. You didn't finish either? I finished high school. No lie? No lie. Then why'd you come in the army? Seemed like a good idea at the time, I said. I love how natural the dialogue is. Nothing comes off as force, but what you expect these characters to talk about, which makes it easy to like and identify with them. It's really that good. And it helps because there is a line in the book where the guys don't face any real conflict. They barely face the enemy at all during the first third. It's all through Perry's perspective, which gives us that idea of waiting and waiting, never knowing when they'll be called out. And when they do, if they'll survive, giving you an idea of the mindset these young men must have been in during the war as they face death for the first time. Jenkins was different. Jenkins had been walking with me and talking with me only hours before. Seeing him lying there like that, his mouth and eyes open, had grabbed something inside my chest and twisted it hard. Another interesting point is the parallel Perry makes to his life in Nam, to his previous life in what they call the world. He grew up in Harlem, which as he describes, is a troubled neighborhood where going to get a single loaf of bread could cost you your life. Which brings the parallel that Perry had no direction in his own backyard. That's why he joined the army, to get away only to be dropped in another no-direction neighborhood where the only rule is pray that you'll survive. In other words, nothing changed. In a way, I was really sorry for Jenkins, but there was a small voice inside me that kept saying that I was glad that it wasn't me that was killed. Which only gets harder because Perry and a good amount of people in his squad are black, and considering the time period... 
The way I figure it, we gotta stick together over here. I can't trust no whitey to watch my back when the deal goes down. So we got an African American man trying to deal with a war that should be ending soon, but just seems to go on and on, making him face some of humanity's worst aspects while trying to hold on to his own, wondering if what they're doing makes them the good guys. I didn't like having to convince anybody that I was the good guy. That was where we were supposed to start from. Otherwise, it didn't make the kind of sense I wanted it to make. Are we the baddies? Even though this is a book aimed at teenagers, it doesn't lessen the horrors these young men witness. Fallen Angels was one of the most challenged books in the 90s due to its adult language and its graphic depictions of war. And when I mean graphic, I mean you're gonna see some seriously messed up shit that can rival with any of the adult stories. Feeding into that confusion, terror, and helplessness. I wanted to fire my weapon to destroy the nightmare around me. I didn't want it to be real. This much death. This much dying. This waste of human life. I didn't want it. The climax in the book is without a doubt one of the most intense reading experiences I've had. The book makes it clear that no matter what, anyone we know can die anytime. Even Perry. It's a young adult book that treats its audience with the weight and respect they deserve. Add modern YA joke here. As to why Walter Dean Myers wrote the book, you don't have to look no further than the dedication. To my brother, Thomas Wayne Sonny Myers, whose dream of adding beauty to the world through his humanity and his art ended in Vietnam on May 7th, 1968. There's a reason We Need Diverse Books is establishing an award and grant in his name, and it's books like these that show why. There's nothing else I can say outside that everyone should read this book. Just like Perry, you're not going to forget these events anytime soon. What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about Fallen Angels? A special shout out to Sarah Acosta for recommending the campaign. If you wish to know more about We Need Diverse Books, Links can be found in the description below. And if you have a suggestion for a book to review, let me know down in the comments. Next week, we'll cross the ocean to meet a friend in the Middle East. Till next time, have a nice day.